I'm Adrian Gobriel. By now you've likely heard of a long COVID. One of the symptoms many are experiencing well after testing positive has been dubbed brain fog. And we're now learning more about how the virus is going in and affecting one of the most critical organs in your body. Everybody who gets COVID gets some brain tissue loss. And the question is how much? It's a startling statement from epidemiologist Colin Furness. Imagine having a really bad concussion. Imagine having a really bad hand injury. Do you want to suffer the equivalent of a really bad blow to the head? For most people, the answer is no. Not be able to, um, not be able to, I can't think of the word, sorry, and that they mm. can't, I can't think of the word. One month ago, City News spoke with Susie Golding as she struggled to form a sentence. Her perplexing prognosis, long COVID. She's now had the vicious virus twice and has had to change careers to a job in a less mentally taxing work environment. We spoke with her again today at work where a mask is required. Unfortunately, her symptoms haven't changed. I can't multitask like I used to once be able to, and I'm just not back to my pre-COVID state of health. Um, and it's really the neurological issues that are causing issues in my life now. The focus on COVID-19 from the beginning of the pandemic is how it affects our respiratory system. Though a recent neurology conference south of the border shared information from recent studies that are now shedding light on how COVID interferes with our blood vessels and the link to the silent sickness many are experiencing. COVID causes your body to develop inflammation in these blood vessels. And you can also develop very, very, very small clots. Uh, you know, these clots clog up the arteries that feed your brain cells. They found abnormalities in areas of the brain that deal with memory, which could explain why people, you know, have trouble forming sentences or even remembering things after COVID. So there's, there's a lot to go through here that we're just discovering right now. What remains on the long list of unknowns is how repeated exposure to COVID can affect someone's brain and whether or not it will lead to other health complications in the future. If a patient comes to you and they're suffering significant brain fog, what do you say to them? There's not much, honestly, that we can do. Uh, we can refer you to a specialist that will see you in a long time, but they have no idea what to do either. What's concerning is that I'm what people call recovered. You know, people look at me and say, oh, you've recovered really well. And if this is what you call recovery, you know, it's still not recovered back to your pre-COVID health. Golding is now participating in and helping organize a survey that looks into long COVID and brain fog with the hopes of better understanding the nuances of a virus that continues to sweep across the country. If you'd like to participate in the survey, you can find a link on our website, citynews.ca. I'm Adrian Gobriel for City News.